love your work. On this show, we help you achieve success on your own terms. This is about living a balanced life. This is about living and working according to your values. This is about making money through things that make you happy. At the same time, this is about finding the grit to persevere when you meet a challenge. I'm David Cadavy. I've been an independent creator for more than 10 years. I've written a couple best-selling books, Design for Hackers, and now The Heart to Start. If you're new here, welcome. Again, I'm David Cadavy. If you want to join us here on Love Your Work every Thursday, please hit subscribe on your podcast app. And as regular listeners know, I recently self-published for the first time. I traditionally published my first book, Design for Hackers, and I had a good experience. I liked having the extra support for getting my book laid out and printed and onto shelves around the world. And as a first-time author, I really needed the vote of confidence and accountability that a publishing contract gave me. But this time around, with my new book, The Heart to Start, I had a lot to learn. Fortunately, it turned out that I had already built many of the skills that I needed to self-publish. And I'm glad that I never stopped learning. Whether you dream of publishing a book or of doing something else, today's article will help inspire you to keep learning. Before we get to the article, I want to thank our new Patreon supporters, Christian Megarusen Stanshu and Jason Simonic and Luke Freeman are our newest members of Love Your Work Elite. Jason, by the way, Jason Shamanic was the technical editor of Design for Hackers, so he did an awesome job of making sure that the advice that I gave in the book was technically accurate. It's great to have him amongst the supporters of Love Your Work. Thank you to everybody who is supporting. And January was an incredible month for new Love Your Work Elite members. Monthly contributions grew 38%. 38%. If we could do that every month, eventually it would get a little bit out of hand, honestly. Uh, this is yet another sponsor-free episode, and about half the production of this episode is paid for by listeners like you. So if you'd like me to keep producing Love Your Work, please support on Patreon. If several more of you buy me a cup of tea once a month, all of the production costs will be listener-supported. Please support at cadavy.net slash donate. That is cadavy.net slash donate. Here's the article. Want to be an unstoppable self-publisher? Learn these eight skills. Never stop learning. As I write this, I'm about an hour from launching my new book. After publishing one book with a traditional publisher, then being rejected to write a second, I was still reluctant to try self-publishing. So far, I'm glad I did it. What I love about being an independent creator is I never stop learning. While self-publishing this book, I've learned many new skills, but got to use many other skills that I've built over the years. If you want to be an unstoppable self-publishing force, here's what you need to know. You need to know writing, book positioning, HTML and CSS, typography, page layout, voiceover, audio engineering, and marketing. Writing. The writing part of publishing a book is the most obvious. It's the thing that people focus on. They want to know how long it took you to write or how long the book is. By writing, I don't mean spelling, grammar, and punctuation. I mean writing something that people want to read and enjoy reading. I've come a long way in writing skills since I published my first blog post 13 years ago. My only formal training has been sketch writing and storytelling at the Second City in Chicago. But I got my most valuable training over the past couple of years right here on Medium, seeing what resonates with people through applause, comments, and highlights, and getting an occasional grammar lesson from a reader is a great training program for writing. Next, book positioning. Book positioning is the most underrated skill amongst aspiring authors. If you're going to go through all of that work to write a book, it's nice if someone wants to buy it. I cringe to think of the titles and book ideas that I had on the road to publishing my new book. They were self-indulgent and unfocused. They were hard to categorize. Remember that your book is a product. People are looking for something very specific when they buy your book. It could be to escape. It could be to learn something. There are more complex reasons under the surface of why someone buys a book and recommends it to friends. It could be to have their beliefs confirmed. It could be to make them feel good about themselves. I don't know of one killer resource for really nailing book positioning. I learned it and still learn it through a combination of things. One, my first recollection of realizing that I needed to learn book positioning was while reading literary agent David Fugate's How to Publish Your Book. It talks about writing a book proposal 
which you should do in some form whether you self-publish or not. David, by the way, was the agent for Andy Weir, author of The Martian. Two, I had an amazing conversation about book positioning with Tucker Max right here on my podcast. We really got into the psychology of why people buy and recommend books. Three, Tucker helps many authors publish books through his company, Book in a Box. He published a short guide describing their method in which he explains book positioning very well. Four, I also learned a lot about book positioning by hiring Ryan Holiday to review an early book proposal. His comments were very insightful and informative. Five, I learned the most from being a connoisseur of books. When you browse Amazon, look at the title, description, and author bio. Ask yourself what the book promises. Use the number of reviews and ranking to estimate how well it sells. Download the Kindle sample and see how they set up the book in the beginning. Read cultural sensations such as Eat, Pray, Love or The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and ask yourself why they sold so well. All of this adds to your book positioning knowledge. Next up, HTML and CSS. I had never considered my former career as a web designer would be so valuable to self-publishing. I had never considered that HTML and CSS were being used to format Kindle books. But as I first opened up Sigil, which I used to format the Kindle version of The Heart to Start, my HTML and CSS knowledge all came flooding back to me. I initially learned HTML and CSS through building websites, but there are web design books that can teach you as well. If you want to add this skill, the best thing you can do is have your own website and break it a few times. Next up, typography. One of the big things that separates a self-published book from a book published by a big publishing house is the quality of design. Very few people have the skill to make a book really sing through beautiful typography. Even if you use a piece of software such as Vellum to help you out, There are finer details such as getting lines of type aligned across pages and avoiding widows and orphans that take more subtle skill. My typography skill came from my college education as a graphic designer. The best resource on typography is Robert Bringhurst's Elements of Typographic Style, and I also covered typography extensively in my first book, Design for Hackers. Next skill is page layout. This ties in with typography, but getting that typography to work on a page layout program is a whole skill in itself. How do you import the content? How do you manage the various styles so you don't make yourself prone to mistakes? I used my ancient copy of Adobe InDesign CS5 to lay out the hard to start. Again, I learned this through my education as a graphic designer and, of course, by doing. There may be other programs for doing page layout, such as Vellum, but I can't imagine any of them being as robust as InDesign. The next skill is voiceover. One of my secret motivations for reading my articles right here on my podcast, Love Your Work, is that it has allowed me to practice reading for a future audiobook. The quality of narration on an audiobook can make or break it. By the way, the best performance I've heard was Dion Graham reading Miles Davis's autobiography. So check that out. As a bootstrap self-publisher, I don't want to give up profit to a narrator, but I don't want to be another author slurring his way through his own book. Vocal performance, yes, even quote-unquote just talking, is an endlessly complex art. I have only touched the tip of the iceberg by taking a couple levels of voice lessons at Old Town School of Folk Music when I lived in Chicago. I still continue to do warm-ups and exercises before each recording, including this one. My training in voice is also supplemented by performance classes, such as the acting classes I took at the now-defunct Act One in Chicago, and improv at the Second City and other places. I have warm-ups that I do from my classes, but there's a series on YouTube from the National Theater that serves as a great start, so check that out, the National Theater Vocal Warm-Ups. To learn voice, there's no substitute for voice lessons with a local professional. The added bonus is you get a little bit better at karaoke. The next skill is audio engineering. Not only do you need to do a good reading for your audiobook, you need to be able to capture the sound well. ACX, the exchange through which you publish on Audible and other places, has very exacting standards for their audio. And this is probably my weakest skill in the stack, but I think I can get by I have yet to edit my audiobook. Actually, I'm going to hire somebody to edit my audiobook. 
I've learned through making stuff such as online courses and my podcast. I've also accumulated the proper equipment and learned about how to capture noise-free sound. The final skill is marketing. If you can't market your work, it's hard to imagine anyone actually reading it. Yes, you have to write a great book for it to sell, but you need to get it in the hands of those first readers. To publish The Heart to Start, I used a combination of email marketing and social media skills that I've built up over the years of working for startups and building my own things. I even used marketing to fuel my own motivation. I set up an email list and landing page in the beginning, promising to send readers a chapter a day as I wrote it. Many people struggle with marketing their work because they worry that it is sleazy or it's inauthentic, but if you have your positioning down, then your work supposedly helps someone in some way. So isn't it selfish to not try to get that work to people? Now, admittedly, this is a lot of different skills for one person to have. I happen to like doing all of these things, and I find the variety very stimulating. If you hate the idea of doing any one of these things, then you might need to leave some budget to hire someone. But never underestimate the power of learning. Never stop learning. I hope you enjoyed that article. I hope it inspires you to keep learning new things all the time. If you haven't checked out The Heart to Start yet, please do. You know that you have something to offer the world and The Heart to Start will help you bust through the mental barriers that are holding you back from making it real. You can get it on Kindle or paperback at kataby.net slash heart and you can also listen on Audible at kataby.net slash audible. You'll help me write more books and you'll help me keep making this show. Is Love Your Work helping inspire you to pursue the life and work that you love? If so, I could really use your help. This show takes work and it takes money to make. To keep making the show and to keep it free for everyone, it needs your support. Besides subscribing and reviewing the show, there's one big thing you can do to help, and that is to donate. I work to make this show nourishing and thoughtful in an economy that's all about grabbing attention. This is not the short route to success. If you believe in Love Your Work's message of living a balanced life and finding fulfilling work, please join Love Your Work Elite, hosted on Patreon. Patreon is a platform that lets you support creators like me, vote with your dollars, and keep Love Your Work going. You're going to get bonus content and a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at lywelite.com. That's lywelite.com. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by top Love Your Work Elite members, such as Arif Akhtar. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Kadavy. The theme music for this show is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc. <laughs>